Hello and welcome to our lesson on arc length and sector area of circles. So what's my learning goal today? I can determine the following. Length of a line segment within a circle, the measurement of the arc, sector area of the circle, and the measurement of the central angle. <clears throat> so all, all of those are going to stem from about four formulas. So it looks more daunting than it really is. So uh, chord division theorem is where I want to start. So with a given circle, uh, with a chord and a center of a circle, so I need to draw in my center here, so I need to add that into the note. If I was to construct a radius such that it passes through the chord at a right angle, all right, what happens is the chord is then divided in half. Okay, so that's simply what that means. So any radius that's drawn perpendicular to the chord will bisect it. Now bisect means simply to cut in half. So the chord is cut in half. And that's our chord division theorem. So the chord division theorem allows us to answer questions that look like this in the textbook. So uh, determine each unknown. I want to know the value of x. So given on a particular test, I would tell you that's the center O right there. And I'd have to draw this in. This would be provided on a test. It would be right angle. And same with the next diagram. That would all be provided. So what's that mean? Well, what we have here is now a triangle, which is a right angle, and we need no two sides. To find that third side, we're simply going to use our friend Pythagorean theorem to solve for the unknown. So we'd have 6 squared plus x squared equals 9 squared. 36 plus x squared equals 81. So x squared would be 45, and the unknown value that we're looking for is the square root of 45. On the second example, it's the same information, but this is the right angle triangle, and the length of question is actually out here. Now, being given the information that this is the center of the circle would mean that this line right here, we know it as diameter, and if that's the center of the circle, that would mean that those two lengths that are just our radius. So x and x, those are the same lengths. So if that's the case, it's still Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this time it's 4 squared plus 6 squared equals x squared. So 36, no, I'm on the wrong one there. 16 plus 36 equals x squared, and adding those up, x squared is 52, or x equals square root of 52. That finishes that off for us. So there we go. So the Pythagorean theorem does play a big role for us still here. Now, I want to find arc length and surface area. And surface area is simply that sector area. So first of all, this is the arc length in question. So I'm just going to call it arc. And then I want to know this area here of the sector. So we're going to call it AS for area of sector. Okay? So a couple of things we need to know from grade 9. We need to know our arc, our, our uh, circumference formula. So the circumference formula is 2 pi r. Our area of a sector, sorry, we want full circle here. Area of the circle is pi r squared. So those are the two areas from grade 9. Now, we only want a proportion of this. So if you recall... A circle has 360 degrees. We only want a part of it. So what we end up with is some form of ratio. So if I go to the area, we get area equals theta divided by 360. So that's just going to be a ratio, degrees divided by degrees, so the units we cancel out. So it gives us some ratio of the circle that we want to work with, multiplied by pi r squared. So that means we end up with an area formula looks like this. So that's the area of the sector. So theta pi r squared divided by 360. Now theta over 360 is just a fraction telling us what fraction of that circle we want. Similarly with arc length. Circumference, this is for a whole 360 degrees. So the arc length is some proportion of that. So some proportion and the angle is our proportion. So t pi r now the 2 and the 360 will reduce, so we'll go down to lowest terms. So theta pi r over 180, and that will give us our arc. And I can't spell arc. There we go, A-R-C. 
So that's your second formula for the area, or sorry, that's for the length of arc, arc length, and that is the second one's for your area. So we have a couple of examples practicing that. So we want to find the unknowns. So the number one, find the arc length and area. So the arc length is this one right here, the larger one. So my arc length again. Man, ACR, I can't. Arc is the most complicated three-letter word I've ever tried to spell in my life. So the arc formula, theta pi r over 180, theta pi r over 180, plugging that in, 250 pi times 10 over 180, and survey says we get a total of 43.6 centimeters. There we are. Now area. Again, you have that formula already, so I'm just going to use that one right there. The theta pi r squared over 360. So once you have the formula, it's just a simple, well, I shouldn't say simple, but just a substitution or a plug and chug scenario here. So now, this one, 250 times the 3.14 times 100, divide that by 360, and we end up with 218 centimeters squared. Okay, so it doesn't look nearly as bad when you get uh, when you get the formulas, and that's the nice thing with uh, these kinds of questions. We're back to just playing around with formulas, so it's just identifying your formula and going from there. The second example, so it's telling us that this area is 300, and tells us the radius is 15, so we want to find arc length and central angle. Now I know my arc length the formula is theta pi r over 180. So I don't have the central angle. I don't have theta. So it tells me that's what I'm going to look for first. I have area. So that's where I'm going to start. So theta pi r squared over 360. So I know the area is 300. Theta is what I'm looking for. Pi is just a number. I know that the radius is 15 squared. And that's all over 360. So, rearranging, calculating, solving for theta, I'm going to take the uh, 300, I'm going to multiply it by 360, so 300 times the 360, then I'm going to divide by pi, and I'm going to divide that by 15 squared, and I end up with a central angle of, I'm going to go with 153, 153 degrees. So there's my central angle, now I can use it to answer A part. So 153 times pi times 15 over 180. So I multiply that by the 3.14, multiply that by 15, and divide by 180. And I get an arc length of 40 meters. And there we go. So those are the uh, the formulas you need to use and practice here. I have the homework listed down here at the bottom. So there's the homework. You can copy that down. That's what you'll be working on in class next day. If you have any problems, let me know, and we will take care of them next day in class. Good luck.